Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Hello, squatties. How are you? Happy Tuesday. Hope you are all doing great. I know that all of us in squatty world are singing and rejoicing. We have so much content because of our faves. We don't need to go anywhere else, but just revel in all of this beautiful strawberry jam. So, <laughs> of course, you know, I know we've all been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for Megan to, you know, let us know what she's doing or at least what she's making or what she's going to start with. And it was just so wonderful to see this. But before we even get into our fave, I just say, you know, the lemon and the strawberry jamness is just, uh, you know. <laughs> It's all up in my brain at the moment. But hello, my friends in the chat. How are you all doing? Hello, Raffaella joining us from Rome. And Karen M, our awesome moderator. Hello, Karen M. And our awesome moderator, Church Nelly. Terrific Tuesday, all. Yes. Hello, Church Nelly and all of our wonderful, wonderful squaddies in South Carolina. How you doing? Hope you are well. Annie is here. Hello, Annie. Who else is here? Uh, oh, Gwendolyn is here. Hello, Gwendolyn. Um, and if you're looking for anything facts and two cents related, definitely just check out Church Nelly's post. She has posted all the links in her posts in here. Thank you so much, Church Nelly, including American Riviera uh, Orchard. So if you're looking, yeah, well, it's not there yet, but... Uh, <laughs> When it's there and you have your, you know, you have your moolahs ready to go, I'm sure. Uh, Church Nelly has all the links there. Uh, thank you so much, Church Nelly. Hello, Kathy Gabby. How are you? I'm so happy you're here. Perlina is here. Hello, Perlina. Um, who is saying hello to Fancy? Oh, here is Fancy down here. Hello, Fancy, Fancy. How are you? And uh, Connie is here hanging out with us from Switzerland. Hello, Connie. How are you? Um, and uh, Rootsy is here. Hello, Rootsy. How are you? And all of our other friends will say hello to as we go along. Joyce is also here and uh, Lorna is also here. So again, we'll say hello to everyone else as we go along. But anyway, back to our faves. American Riviera Orchard has unveiled, well, at least she sent it to a couple of her friends <laughs> and they unveiled um, the first product that we're seeing i guess she made you know you see the numbers down there 17 of 50 so i'm assuming she made 50 to send out to friends and family and people who you know social media friends especially who will post it so sort of give us a little bit of a hint of what she's doing and so um uh, uh, Miss Tracy Robbins, as you can remember, Tracy, when Harry and Meghan were in Jamaica and uh, when they went for the the um, the uh, Bob Mar hello, Bob Marley film that they were having the premiere there in Jamaica, One Love, and that's uh, Miss Tracy Robbins and her husband, um. Brian Robbins, who is the head of Paramount Pictures. And so they were there and that's her. Megan sent her some jam. And so she posted it on social media. I posted it on our community page yesterday. I'm sure others talked about it uh, before maybe Byron talked about it or that's just of success. I hadn't had a chance to go over there and check their uh, podcast out from yesterday as yet. But um, so Tracy's like, thank you for the delicious basket. I absolutely love this jam. Not sure I'm sharing it with anyone. So, so much for her husband sharing it with her. She's like, I'm not sharing that, you know? <laughs> and she's like, American Orchard, American Riviera Orchard breakfast, lunch, dinner, just a little sweeter. Oh, I love that. I absolutely, I hope Megan holds on to that. Um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, just a little sweeter. I like that. That's very Megan. And so I love it. I love, for me, I love when, you know, whenever you open like a basket or you open uh, whatever it is you purchase, the presentation is always key for me. I love the presentation. And I'm very much into earthy things. So the colors, the little 
a bow on the jar, the little um, fabric around it, which is very earthy, linen-y kind of, I mean, I'm assuming fabric. I'm totally feeling. Now, you know, I'm more into, you know, rope and stuff like that. So, but I'm feeling this. I'm totally feeling this. Totally Megan's minimalistic uh, vibe. She is very minimalist. And I love the vibes. Very simple. It's very clean. And I uh, love the logo on there. Miss Madame Monticito. <laughs> so I love this. I cannot wait. I am personally not really a strawberry person. Like I love, it's weird with me and strawberry. I love eating the actual strawberry. I'm not a fan of eating like, for example, strawberry ice cream or strawberry jam or preserves or anything like that. But I will try this. But I'm also hoping that there are other flavors as well. So, but I'm I'm looking forward to, looking forward to trying the jam. The jam. So, and I'm telling you, I'm sold, <laughs> even though I'm not a strawberry jam type of person. And it's really weird that I'm like that. I'm a very weird person because I love eating strawberries. But for some reason, it doesn't translate when it becomes jam or preserves or even ice cream or uh, anything like that. Like it doesn't translate for me. And so but I am. Um, hey. I'm willing to, to try this, and I'm assuming this is Megan's recipe. Who knows? Uh, but they love it, and so tons of people are you know, looking forward to it as well. And, of course, Delphina, her sister, and I'm assuming she probably gave it to Delphina when they were together. I mean, they were just together over the weekend so i'm assuming um she got it uh, she gave it to delphina then and so delphina posted it on her instagram as well and so um, i love the little setup back delphina is such a content creator i love the you know <laughs> the uh, little drink and the jar and the cut strawberries now again i am more uh, i am the strawberry cut strawberry or just the fruit yeah just a strawberry person so i love it and she says strawberry jam makes me happy i love that <laughs> and she's like i and i love your jam at american rivera orchard so she's got a fan in delphina and tracy and so we'll see if any other any other person uh, or any other people posted on social media not everybody uh post their stuff on social media but this is really cool i am like you go megan and you know, if they're excited, look at the press. <laughs> and this is just some. I didn't have time to go in and get all of it. This is just some of the people and some of the press it's already gotten. I'm like, Megan doesn't really have to do any press for this thing at all, does she? She has all the major, whether it's the US or the UK, they're already blasting it. And then when they do that, that'll just then go out to the rest of the world. <laughs> and even there are some news outlets in the UK already uh, trying to figure out how much the price is going to be, if it's going to be at Waitrose. Why? Waitrose, because King Charles has his jam from uh, the Dutchie there, uh, the Dutchie originals there at um, Waitrose. And so they're like, well, King Charles's jam is like two, whatever it is, two pound, two something pounds. I, I don't know, 218, I guess, something like that. So they're wondering how much her jam is going to cost and it's going to have, and they're claiming that already that is going to have stiff competition i'm like you don't even know if it's going to be sold there <laughs> you have no idea if her jam is going to be sold at waitrose or any place in the uk for that matter i'm assuming you know they'll they'll sell it to the uk but you have no idea where and so they're already predicting this major competition with the roy um with the royal brand of the dutchy originals at waitress it's very funny but i'm like i'm telling you megan just and i'm hoping you know she has the what uh 50 jars i guess that she made i hope she's mar mass marketing this stuff because it better not be like a limited amount of things because so many people are already excited about this jam that it's like, girl, I hope you have thousands of this thing ready to go <laughs> because you're going to have a backlog if not. <laughs> so, but very, very exciting, very exciting to see. And again, I love the whole minimalist, very beige, brownie kind of earthy. That's my vibe. And so I absolutely just love it. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, Sylvia says, I'll buy organic now. I'll buy, I'll buy it. There you go. So there you go. I'm telling you, everyone is like, Megan, I have money. Just tell me when. I want to give you my money. <laughs> Uh, Lola says, Megan is not targeting her product in the UK. It's American Row. <laughs> Ro. um, it's like, or A-R-O. Um, they make everything a competition. I, it, it, it's just their nature, I guess. I mean, it's always either a competition or just some kind of assuming that she is talking to them or that they are the ma market that she's aiming for. It's like people. Uh, you're kind of not, uh, you know, you're sort of inserting yourself. You're not the audience here, <laughs> but you know, whatever, I guess, whatever. And you know, they're going to buy it. And when it comes out and then rip it to shreds, because that's who they are. <laughs> Just, it, you know, whatever. Um, Maddie, hey, Maddie, Maddie says, hello, Squatty. Hope we get a taste Hope we get to taste it and support her. I know, I know, right? One squatty's like, hey, how about I do it? And I do the big taste for everybody. And it's like, no, nah, we all want to taste it. So no. <laughs> so I'm telling you, when this go on sale, please get your credit card ready right at the ready because that thing is going to sell out really, really fast. As with everything, Megan, don't wait. Save up your money now, maybe a little extra. I have no idea of obviously how much this is going to cost, but save up a little extra just in case. <laughs> because if you want to taste it, you're going to have to go quickly. So if nothing else, those in the British press are going to buy it up. So there you go. Lottie says, uh, did you see the folks across that river? They're losing it. Well, they always lose it, but yes. <laughs> it's very funny. I mean, uh, you know, to their, in their defense, they don't really have much to write about. <laughs> they really don't have anything exciting to write about. They have nothing new to write about and nothing that's fun to write about. So, of course, the minute this happens, they'll jump on it. You know, if I were them, I'd do it. So, yeah, um, they don't really have much to be writing about. That's exciting, fun, new, and any that anybody would really care outside of the royal bubble and probably me because I have to, you know, I want to report on it. But yeah, so, but I am so happy for Megan. And obviously we saw Harry over the weekend shooting his polo documentary. It is, a, or a docu-series. I mean, assuming it's like a little bit of a series or maybe it's just one I or one off. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, so they are doing their thing. Lorna says the jam may be limited if Megan follows the Alice Waters philosophy, which is producing only in season, produce, produ which is producing only in season, produce for consumption. Okay. That's an idea. Okay. Maybe. Hmm. We'll see. Um, let's see. Uh, Diane says one of 50 to Miss Daria just because. I'm not sure what you mean. Explain. <laughs> TMCD is like, my card is ready. I'm ready to buy. Here's my money, Megan. <laughs> there are other people like me on, on X are like, they're not even into jam. And they're like, but I'm going to buy it. <laughs> and so I feel it. I totally feel it. Again, I'm not into strawberry stuff, but I will buy it because I just want to have it and I want to taste it. So yeah. And uh, let's see. <laughs> And Angelita says, Meg has got me clearing out a credit card for her line. I know. <laughs> I'm telling you, I can't even afford stuff and I'm ready. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yes, uh, JSC, it will definitely sell fast. Um, <laughs> people who don't care about jam is going to be buying jam. <laughs> I, it's so funny because very, very rarely do I eat anything with jam. I mean, very rarely. And if, if I do, it's usually like apricot or something with like, you know, combination flavors because that's more my thing. And uh, yeah. And so I'm like, I'm ready. Even me, I'm ready for it. Uh, so <laughs> everyone said it'll be number one ready. Uh, oh, I'll be number one, ready to buy my jam. <laughs> I'm telling you, people be all over jam. It's like jam, but yeah, there we are. So 
Adi says, I'm so happy for Harry and Meghan. I pray that this would put uh, put the over or put them over the top, make them new billionaires. I'm, I'm telling you, look, I hope they do make tons of money off of this. So there you go. Um, just to live their life, if only to pay for their security and all of that stuff. I mean, look, I'm just wishing them to the best in all of this stuff. Um, just, you know, make that bank. So that way you they never, ever, ever have to ever rely on anyone and, and that it provides for their kids for the future. So they never have to rely on, especially the royal family for anything. So yeah, so very cool. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see what else you guys are saying before I move on. Um, Connie says, we squaddies have to support her to, an, um, to the annoyance of trolls and the UK media. Oh, we always do that. We always do that. And <laughs> they always annoyed at us anyway. So <laughs> there's just going to be one more thing. <laughs> just one more thing. We will definitely be supporting. That she doesn't have to worry about. We are definitely there. Lola Love says, I'm not into strawberry jam either. I hope she comes out with raspberry jam. Oh. We're so funny. I don't even like raspberry. <laughs> but just for Connie, yes, raspberry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Just for Lola. Lola, um, Lola love. Raspberry, yes. I'm I'm thinking she'll come out with different flavors. That's what I'm thinking. Um, definitely different flavors. <laughs> Church Nelly. Church Nelly, only you. Church Nelly's like, send my jam with nacho carrying it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Church Nelly. He'll come with Delfina trail and, and little Alba trailing behind. <laughs> You'll have to beat them off with a stick. <laughs> but uh, yes, um, uh, Maddie Rambo says, "Love jam." Used to boil it in Jamaica. Okay, yeah, my family used to make jam. in the Caribbean. We make jam, a jam and jelly a lot. So yeah, um, let's see. But I hope she comes out with some exotic flavors like mango. Oh, Lady T says her flavors are raspberry, apricot, peach, and strawberry. Ooh, very interesting. I see apricot and peach I like. Apricot, but I'd like to have like mango or something. That would be kind of interesting. And so, yeah, I hope she comes out with some cool uh, flavors. So anyway, so we are all up into ARO Jam. We're jamming with Megan at ARO. So very, very, very exciting. And again, uh, it'll be interesting to see who else. I'm assuming Serena and others may have, um, may have other, uh, may have, you know, their little samples as well. So hopefully we get their take. And again, I don't know who else she sent. It seems she she made 50 jars of it. And so, yeah, very exciting. Uh, Cynthia Ashen says, hi, Petal. The Commonwealth countries are fruit rich and are mostly naturally grown. So hope Megan tap into these countries for assortments of fruits to make her jam. Very cool too. And I mean, she's in California. So California have a whole bunch of that stuff there anyway. And Megan has a garden. So she's probably growing that, a lot of that those fruits in her, her garden. So yeah, but yeah, definitely tap into the Caribbean fruits, man. I am all about it. When I am, I grew up in the Caribbean, so our whole yard were fruit trees. So you have mangoes, chenets, guava, grapefruit. We have avocado, well, which is a vegetable, but you know, or fruit. Wait, is avocado a fruit? I think avocado is a fruit. I always get confused with avocado, but yeah. And so we had tons and tons of bananas and plantains and all kinds of fruits and vegetables in our garden. So um, I'm assuming Megan um, has a lot. I know she definitely has lemon because <laughs> we've heard that before. And so, yeah, so definitely. But I am looking forward to some very, very exciting uh, jam flavors. So Anne says, yes, I need raspberry jam for my thumbprint butter cookies. Oh that I make at Christmas. Better, Megan better come through with um, Lola Love and Anne. They need their raspberry. So Megan better come through with that. <laughs> Very exciting. Um, 
Sylvia says, but I read that Tracy had to shut her social media down. I'm assuming trolls probably got in there. If I would, you know, I hadn't checked it, but um, I would assume if she did that, and, you know, I'm assuming you're correct, that trolls would have gotten in there because that's what they do. And people have to shut stuff down, which is unfortunate that they would have to do stuff like that. Because again, anything with Harry and Meghan, it's, it, Unfortunately, when the British press gets involved, their trolls get involved and they harass people. And you know what? It's good people just shut their stuff down. Nobody needs to and nobody care to deal with that mess anyway. So, yeah. And rightfully not having to deal and not having to listen to people's nastiness. So, yeah. It's amazing that Jam would do that. I mean, it's like, people, it's Jam. Chill out. <laughs> Perlita says mangoes and blueberry jam. Ooh, hmm, maybe some combinations. I love combination flavors. So yeah, maybe some combinations. That would be awesome. <laughs> um, Kenita says one of those jams went to her headmistress from her old school. Really? Oh, I had no idea. I'm assuming um, that could be, that would be nice. Absolutely. So yes, TBTB is like, oh, toasted bread with butter and jam. Excellent. Yes, absolutely. Or oh, freshly baked bread, butter, and some jam. Oh, the best. <laughs> the best. So yes, my goodness. So we're all like, you know, envisioning how we're going to have our jam. So thank you all for uh, indulging me in the jam stuff. But again, Megan is not going to be wanting in publicity or marketing because if only the British press, they will be talking about this forever. And uh, so great to see. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what else she's um, unveiling. I love what she's done so far. And um I'm assuming that she is um, filming or maybe you have some episodes. I don't know. We will wait and see. Apparently, according to, like we said yesterday, according to people, um, it should be coming out. Her show should be coming out in the spring. Whenever that is, don't know. But um, we will see. TBTB says, uh, mangoes don't grow well in California. So I don't think that will happen. Okay, so then she can definitely get it from the Caribbean that would be awesome. Some island there in the Caribbean, I'm sure. Um, one of the, my greatest, one of, it's so funny. Um, my mom, I hope she's listening, she told me one of our family members cut down our chenna tree and I think our mango tree. And we have been mourning these things for months now because we grew up with these huge mango trees and chenna trees and cannot believe that they were cut that, that I'm like, how dare they? cut down these things. <laughs> I'm telling you, in the Caribbean, we just have so many of this stuff. And it's just, you basically get attached to these trees because basically a lot of times um, we grew up very poor. And so those trees, because we used to sell them to tourists, we used to sell chenets to tourists and mangoes to tourists and stuff like that. A lot of those trees were our life. We, we made our you know living off of those trees. And so we came, we came to just really depend on that to bring money in and stuff. And so we've been bemoaning the fact that our family member cut those trees down. <laughs> Even though we're not there, it's like I still feel attached to those trees because you grew up with them. So, yeah, very interesting. I'm still haven't forgiven that person yet, but maybe one day. So, yeah, there you go. Moving on from Megan's uh, branches, I have to learn forgiveness. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sylvia says, uh, clever blend coffee and briskets and jam. Ooh, see, see, I'm telling you, Megan knows her thing. She knows how to combine all these things. This is wonderful. This is absolutely, absolutely wonderful. So yes. Um, anyways, um, what else is happening in the world? <laughs> of, um, our faves and, uh, part from jam, um, a little bit of news that's not the best news. Um, Prince Harry got some disappointing news from his court case. Disappointing, I'm sure, for him. For squatties, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, we love Harry, but we don't want you in the UK. And it's just like, we're at the point, I was like, you know, Harry, time to smell the tea leaves. Or I'm sorry, read the tea leaves, you know. It's just like... 
again, so this is a little bit of a setback for his case, um, bringing uh, really for the judicial review about his security. And we know that he has basically brought the government or at least uh, the home office is, um, who handles royal security, including Ravak, to court uh, for a judicial review about how they went about taking away his, his Megan and Archie's security. And so this is the latest of it. Uh, it says, Prince Harry's fight for police protection in the UK received another setback on Monday when the judge rejected his request to appeal an earlier ruling upholding a government panel's decision to limit his access to publicly funded security after giving up his status as working as a working member of the royal family. The long-running legal battle began over uh, more than four years ago when Harry challenged the panel's decision, arguing that he and his family still needed an armed security detail because of the hostility directed towards him and his wife, Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, on social media and the relentless hounding by the news media. But the High Court judge, Peter Lane, ruled on, in February that the panel decision, which provides for bespoke security on an as-need basis wasn't unlawful, irrational, or unjustified. Insofar, um, which is what the judge, the ruling says, insofar as the case by case approach may otherwise have caused difficulties, they have not been shown to be such as to overcome the high hurdle so as to render the decision making irrational, Lane wrote in his 51 page ruling. In most cases, UK plaintiffs don't have the automatic right to appeal and they must seek permission from the original court before doing so. The High Court said Monday that it had rejected Harry's initial bid for permission to appeal. However, he can now seek permission directly from the Court of Appeals. And so he can't, you know, directly appeal the, you know, the the case that basically he lost, but now he can go to the court, court of appeals and file there and try to get the appeal through there. So we just learned yesterday that he hit from his legal team that he will indeed go ahead and appeal that through the court of appeals. And again, as squaddies, we don't want Harry and Meghan in our country. We don't want them anywhere there. <laughs> so for us, it's like, okay, this is another reason for Harry to just not have to be there. We don't want, you know, we don't want have Meghan and her kids anywhere near there. So for us, it's like, whatever. And so I'm not all upset. I mean, I want Harry because I know it's his home country. And so it, it matters to him because that's his home. But again, seeing what we're seeing from those people they don't care about his security they don't care what happens to him they put his life in danger so it's just like this is you know just another part of them doing the basically the same thing but uh, the more I think about it, and I, I think, you know, I hope Harry is, I mean, I know he is documenting it because it's it's part of a court case. So it's, it's documented that way. But I really do hope that Harry is probably, you know, doing maybe a documentary or something to parallel what they did to Princess Diana in taking away her security and why I believe lying about it and what he is doing and how he is going through every single channel to make sure that he has covered every base. So later down the road, no one can claim that he did not, like that he rejected security. And that's, you know, if something, God forbid, anything were to happen, someone would be like, oh, well, Harry didn't, you know, he didn't want the security. He rejected the security. And so I'm hoping that, you know, in my brain, as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, you know, it'd be cool. It would not only be cool, but I think it would be for historical records for there to be a parallel for what they said happened with Princess Diana's security and what we are seeing in real time, Harry's fight for said security because Princess Diana left, she left her working role as a working royal and they claim she didn't want her security. So therefore when she died, they were like, oh, if only she had security or if only she hadn't rejected it. Well, here is Harry in the same situation, leaving the, his role as a working royal, them taking the security and him fighting tooth and nail 
to get that security back and they are rejecting it from the highest court in the land to you know the royal family the ravec to home office to the government to the um to the judges all rejecting it and I'm hoping that Harry, in every step, he's documenting, you know, because it's kind of like when you put the parallels, when you put them together, Princess Diana didn't have the benefit of a social media where we can keep track of this stuff in real time. But now we can parallel it because we see it play out right in front of our faces. And so for me, I'm hoping, you know, that Harry is going to do a documentary or something. Or at least if if only for his kids to see like, okay, you know, they claim this, they claim my mother rejected security. But look, I look, I am in the same situation as having leave and look at what they're doing to deny me security. How, you know, can we then trust those people who have lied about my mother, lied, um, you know, basically try to defame her in every sense of the word. Can you really trust their word? Because we have no written document, no video evidence, no audio evidence that Princess Diana actually rejected that security. We only have the the monarchy's word for it and those uh, so-called, you know, security people and the Metropolitan Police. None of those people are trustworthy. None of those people, you can take their word for it. None of them. And so we have no actual evidence that Princess Diana did. We have no written, verbal, video, nothing. We only have to take their word for it. But if you go uh, again, but if you go back to what they're doing to Harry, you can have a great idea or firm idea of what exactly they did to princess diana because then they had nobody watching over their backs they had no social media that you know that we can look at this in in real time and so again i hope harry even just even if it's just for himself and his family that they have it you know that sort of juxtaposing both experiences and I would, you know, I would love it too, because me and I know many people have a lot of questions with that whole Princess Diana rejecting security nonsense, which I don't believe in any way, shape or form. So anyway, that's a long winded thing about that. Um, again, they denied his uh, appeal and now he is going and he is going to be appealing through the court of appeals. So we will see what happens again. You know, again, most likely... This will not, he will not succeed, but Harry would know that he tried. He will always know that he did everything that he could to get security and they turned it down. And so nobody can go back and claim that he didn't want it. So, yeah. And so along with that, something else happened along with this court case that Prince Harry had to apologize for because whether he knew and did, you know, did it anyway or didn't know whatever, he committed a faux pas <laughs> and um, he breached security um, with the information, uh, with the court cases, stuff that I guess if you're not part of the circle of people like the lawyers and the claimants and the defendants, you're not supposed to go emailing or sharing that information with anyone outside that circle. And Prince Harry kind of did. And so not kind of did, he actually did. And so he had to apologize for that. And I was trying to find the, I saw on, um, someone had posted the actual court document and didn't get a chance to go and find it. So I will post the whole um, Justice Lane's whole, um, his whole order or his whole um thing including this there because this is a this is a part of the um decision that he made so it was all in the document there and i couldn't find it before i came on so i could post it in the community page and you can um you can read the whole i think it's like 51 pages of it you can read it um but this one it says prince harry apologizes for breaking confidentiality rules in high court case court documents reveal the duke of sussex emailed confidential information to Johnny Mercer, the veterans minister. And you, we all know Johnny Mercer. He's the one that Harry was with in um, Dusseldorf at the games. And he's also the one, um, he is an MP and he is also the one that's trying to get Invictus games to 
the UK. And it's like, no, Johnny, no. <laughs> but he's the one, you know, he's a friend of Harry's, whatever. And so apparently it's a faux pas to be sharing confidential court information, even though Johnny is an MP. So it goes on to say, Harry was forced to apologize after breaking confidentiality rules in his own high court case by sharing private information with Johnny Mercer. Court documents revealed that the Duke emailed the veterans minister confidential information concerning his security claims against home office. The Duke has had a long shared a close bond with Mr. Mercer with both having served in Afghanistan. So it, um, it goes on, it says, um, I'm just going to read it. It says, Mr. Mercer is a vocal supporter of the Invictus Games and is spearheading the government's attempt to host the 2027 event in Birmingham. The pair were photogra photographed drinking pints of beer together in the last event um, in Dusseldorf, German, in Dusseldorf, Germany. Uh, Mr. Justice Lane revealed the Duke's indiscretion in a cost ruling hand down on Monday concerning his failed application for jud a judicial review. Says, um, so Mr. Lane, he says, um, in November, this is specifically about what Harry did. In November 2023, the claimant, Prince Harry, breached the terms of confidentiality ring order. Um, in, I'm sorry, in November 2023, the claimant breached the terms of the confidentiality ring order by emailing certain information to a partner of Schilling's who was not within the confidentiality ring and to the right, um, the right honorable Johnny Mercer MP. The breach was also immediately detected by the Duke's own barrister, Shahid Fatima KC, who promptly informed his solicitor, Jenny Afia, who works for Schilling. She in turn informed the defendant via the government's legal department, as well as taking action to minimize the effects of the breach, the judge says. The Home Office argued that such a breach for which the judge said the Duke had apologized caused it to incur unnecessary costs. The judge said he did not wish to minimize the seriousness of the breach, but concluded that it did not have any bearing on the overall determination of cost. So whatever it is that Harry sent to um, Johnny Mercer and this other person, um, obviously he shouldn't have done that. And it's great that his, I mean, I don't know how they found out. I'm sure, you know, I don't know that he was hiding it necessarily, but the minute that he let that, um, his attorneys know they took action right away because they understood you just can't do that. And so they let the, the defendant, which is the home office know. And then, you know, the home office was like, well, that cost us money. And the judge was like, no, it didn't. So, but it is serious. You don't do that. You, when, when you in these court cases, there are certain things you just can't tell anybody. And Harry did breach that and apologize. So, that being said, it's like, okay, so this was definitely a setback and a faux pas. Our fave is not perfect. He's human. He makes mistakes. So um, hopefully he does not do that again. And so <laughs> I'm sure he won't. And so, yeah. Um, so we'll see. Again, he's appealing the case. And so, again, I think it's just Harry is covering every base and following every step. I mean, so many people are like, you should give up. You should get it's like, no, he's covering every base. So at the end of on the end of it, he can say for sure I did every single thing I could to get security. If he doesn't get it, he doesn't get it. But he can put his head down at night knowing he did every single thing he could. And so, yeah, Marsha says, lesson learned. Yes, I'm sure he learns the lesson. You don't do that. And that was wrong of him to do it. And he did. And um, obviously the judge brought it up. And it, it's good. And it, it's great that he has great attorneys that they caught it. They minimized the damage. They informed the, the defendant what happened. And they, you know, they took immediate action and he apologized. So, yeah, it was definitely you shouldn't do it. Harry was wrong. And so they course corrected and he apologized and so they moved on and so that part of the case is over now on to the appeals court so we'll see what happened and again at the end of the day i think again harry is just trying to cover all his bases to make sure that he did everything he could to you know 
to get his security. So there you go. Um, uh, Sylvia says, uh, honestly, they do not care or respect Harry in that country. Any country will not give the son of a king and his family security is shameful. Gross. It's absolutely shameful. It is disgusting, despicable in every way. But again, the UK works that way. It's like if they cannot, it's it's they have a very colonialist mindset. It's how they are. They have to control you. And if they cannot control you, they will destroy you. That is how they are. And it's like in so many ways, you see the same pattern. You see it, whether it's in the UK, whether it's in one of their... Um, you know, we, we talked a lot here about Jersey Island with all the mess and corruption that there. We did a whole episode on that. That's exactly how they work. If they cannot control you and cannot control what you do, they will seek to destroy you in any way, shape, or form. I mean, hello, Prince Harry's mother is right there. <laughs> so there you go. Um, anyways, what else is happening other than this? So we keep our fingers crossed for Prince Harry just for his sake. But again... I'm not complaining. I'm like, that means you're not going to have to be there. I'm happy. As long as the longer Harry has to stay away from that place, I am happy. So there you go. Um, what else is happening? Um, <laughs> Y'all remember this, right? We did this. It's so funny. I was looking for the Adelaide, like the aerial shot of Adelaide Cottage. And then I forgot I posted this back like two years ago in 2022 when we were doing, um, well, we were doing this because William and Kate were deciding to move to Adelaide Cottage. And so they had this narrative that they cooked up with the tabloids that, oh, William is, you know, they're just like ordinary people. They are downsizing. And then that was the same time William did this thing with the, what is it, the homeless, um, the, the the newspaper that that's on the street in New York is like, it was called Street News. But I forgot what it's called in the UK where, um, there's this newspaper that people who are unhoused or homeless, they sell these newspaper on the street. And William, that was the first time I think he did it, where he went there and um, was selling the newspaper with his uh, so-called friend that he has still hasn't helped to you know get his life in a better place. But they were selling these newspapers. And so they had this narrative that, oh, see, William is just, he's just any cool guy. You know, he's not even cool. He's just any person. I mean, he is downsizing. He's a guy that, you know, they're trying to play it off as he doesn't have a lot of money. He, you know, he's trying, you know, he lived in this castle and now they're downsizing into a much, much, much smaller place so that they can save money, that kind of thing. Just like any ordinary people do, Right. And so they had this narrative that they put, you know, they had the big front page thing. And then the squad was like, no, we are not having that nonsense. And then we just started blasting this stuff all over social media with all the properties that William and Kate owned. And then the fact that they are not downsizing, which was the narrative, oh, they're downsizing from this big mansion at Kensington Palace and going into this tiny little cottage that even their um even their nannies and cook their chefs and all of that stuff can't even live there they have to live off site because they're going into this tiny little place and so we were like uh no they're not they still have Kensington Flowers that the, the British people paid 4.5 million pounds to renovate. They still have Amna Hall. They still have Tamdagar, which now they claim they don't have it. That's the fourth property at the bottom there, uh, bottom right. And so they claim they don't have it, whatever. At least they have three. And now that William is now the Prince of Wales, he has tons, like probably hundreds of property that the Duchy of Cornwall rent out to other people. They have is the, one of the biggest land owners in the UK. And so at the time in 2022, we had all this stuff. And so we were, and then we were even saying, if when you look on the property and the photo on the right, even at Adelaide Cottage, there's not one property. That's not one house. There are two houses on that property. And so we were talking about, look, you have four homes. What are you talking about downsizing? So when that happened and they just, I mean, we overwhelmed social media with all of the all of the things that they own. The British tabloids definitely they started changing their narrative. All of a sudden, the any you know that regular guy downsizing narrative went away really quickly because when people started blasting all these homes that they have, 
they have to change the narrative. And so they kept hiding this house in the back there, this red house that's in the back there. The front part is where, you know, they, that's the Adelaide Cottage. And then there's a second property back there, which we were saying, you know, there is a property back there, which we sure that that's probably where the staff is. And so they haven't really said anything about it. They still were trying to claim that, oh, Adelaide Cottage is this really tiny place that's very, you know, um, not elegant in many ways, which of course, when the Sussexes were looking for a home and they claimed that that's a place that the Sussexes will go, they were describing it as this opulent place. And so when the Cambridges were moving in, when they were Cambridges at the time moving in, all of a sudden it was just, you know, there's just a family, a, a simple four bedroom home for the family that their staff can't even live, you know, the whole nonsense narrative. So, this happened back in 22 and then 2022 and then you know this narrative died down and whatever and then so this happened today to bring this whole thing back with this property in the back there and so the mirror is reporting um prince william and kate middleton are reportedly hatching a surprise uh hatching surprise plans to transform a secret home <laughs> it's like secret home into something of a sanctuary as part of the princess's recovery process and you're like what <laughs> says the royal couple is said to be contemplating renovating uh contemplating renovations and extensions to a little known red brick annex adjacent to their adelaide cottage yes that's red brick home in the back of them there yeah that one um adjacent to the Adelaide Cottage res residence in Windsor. The family who relocated to the Berkshire estate towards the end of the summer of 2022 uh, currently divide their time between the four bedroom cottage and their cherished Amna Hall retreat on the Sandringham estate. And you notice that we're leaving out the uh, 20 room, $4.5 million palace at Kensington Palace. You notice that they left that out. Um, Anyways, uh, to the second clip, it says, however, um, just a clip, however, this decision is not without its challenges, as sources indicate that the Prince of Wales is conscious of public scrutiny regarding royal expenditure and is taking a cautious approach to personally funding the cost. And the other clip says, the need for space is more than a luxury. Oh, sure. Sources say it is vital for the path to wellness, providing her with a serene, um, it's vital for Kate's, I should say, Kate's path to wellness, providing her with a serene environment to manage her treatment demands. Amna Hall is a top pick at the moment, thanks to its generous size and seclusion. Mindful of a past backlash over, over public funding, the Wales is considering footing the bill for Adelaide Cottage Annex refurbishments themselves. And so it's funny, like if you're thinking of, oh, well, I have this supposedly empty house in the back of me and, you know, I could, you know, I want it as a, as they say, a retreat for Kate that will, you know, help her in her recovery. If that's the case and you're paying for, your, for it yourself, why are you telling this to the mirror? If you're doing all of this stuff on your own dime, why does the mirror need to know this? This is a little, according to them, a secret home. It's not secret because we know about it. We were talking about it all of 2022 when we were talking about this. And, but they're claiming, you know, it's secret. So if it's secret and it's something you're planning to, you know, fund yourself and it's this retreat for Kate that nobody's supposed to know, why is this in the mirror? Why is this in the British press? And then they, oh, we are conscious of, you know, public scrutiny. And uh, we are, you notice in the first, this, the middle clip, it says they're conscious of con uh, public scrutiny. And so they're um, taking a cautious approach for personally funding it themselves. Notice in the last clip, it says, um, but the Wales clan is considering footing the bill. They are considering it. This is a this is a couple that have the duchy of the duchy of Cornwall. They have millions of pounds coming in every single year. 
William has done nothing. The Duchy, I think he what every year it brings in about 26 million pounds. Plus, they have the sovereign grant coming in and all the other. Think of all the rent that comes in from the duchy and all the things that they own. They could foot this bill with and nobody needs to know about it. But the only reason we're knowing about this is that they're fielding out the they're fielding out their their subjects to see if an outrage is gonna happen when they land when they land this in the lap of taxpayers and they have to foot this bill. This is why people are knowing about this. They want this out there so that it's like when the time comes when they're like, oh yeah, we're going to have taxpayer pay for it, then, you know, <laughs> they would have already put it out there. So by the time they do it, all the outrage would be gone. This is why this is out there. They don't want to pay for it. And the idea and, and, and the, the thing that was very irritating is that they're selling this and this is what they're doing. This is the royal family PR at work. They are selling this as a, um, it is a vital, it is vital for Kate Spa to wellness, providing her with a, set, a serene environment to manage her treatment demands. How many people in the UK, I have to ask, how many people are in the UK that have cancer right now? that have three and four properties that need taxpayer to fund a, a fourth or fifth property, a fourth or fifth house to, you know, to have a serene environment to manage their treatments. How many in the, people in the UK right now have more than one home and, and need another home so that they can manage their cancer treatment? Mind you, her statement says she's having preventative ke um, chemo so that means she doesn't have chemo. They're doing preventative to prevent her from having cancer. That's what I'm thinking preventative means. But they need another property so that she could manage the demands of her treatment. There are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in the UK, unfortunately, have cancer. Many of them may probably not even have one home. Kate Middleton has four at least. And then the whole duchy of properties that she has, but she needs another one to manage her. Meanwhile, there's a 4.5 million pound Kensington Palace 20 room apartment there available for her. But you need another one that you're hoping that taxpayer foot the bill for it. That's why this is in the public right now. You are fielding out the public so you can drop it in their lap. This is just unbelievable to me. And the, again, these are two people that are, you have not really seen working. I mean, I think William, they're claiming that he's going to start working again on Thursday to try to tell poor people how to, uh, you know, save food. It's like, dude, <laughs> seriously? And so it is just ridiculous. It is utter, <laughs> like people, if you were footing this bill, nobody would have known about it. But you want taxpayers, to, but that is why this is out there. This is why this is out there. It is absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. And not only is it ridiculous, King Charles, I mean, Prince William does not have cancer. I don't believe anyone does, but, you know, if I believe anyone, if any one of these that I believe would have most likely King Charles. King Charles has cancer, okay? Why is King Charles having to go all the way wherever? I don't even remember where the Commonwealth the Commonwealth thing is going to be. So, um, I, where is it again? I forgot. I think I forgot to. Um, oops, sorry. I forgot to. Um, hang on. Oops, sorry, sorry. I have to, uh, forgot to turn my phone off there and it's ringing. Give me one second to turn this off. Here we go. Hang on. Excuse my bad manners. Um, so anyway, so they're going to be having this, you know, the Commonwealth. They have this, I guess, every year. Oh, in Samoa. And um, so they are going to have this, you know, big thing, all the Commonwealth nations, or at least the leaders coming together and all of that stuff. King Charles usually goes. But King Charles is, as he says, battling cancer. Prince William isn't. And we remember, what is it, a few months ago that... Um, Prince Williams is um, press person, 
he was claiming that, oh, that, you know, Prince William is going to be taking over some duties from uh, from King Charles as he battles cancer and all of that stuff. There's always that all that promotion about him doing it in spite of, you know, American. We only know that it's um, William's press person because the American press name checked him. The British press is like, oh, a source said. And so. His press person went, you know, went to different outlets claiming that William is going to be taking over and, you know, relieving, basically relieving Charles. It's, this will be his, I guess, prep to kingship. And in the, all the time that King Charles has been doing these treatments and all of that stuff, William has been missing in action. Every single time it's been Charles is whatever we think about Camilla, at least Camilla has stepped up and taken over some of the things that Charles does. She has been the one that has stepped up. William, you would think as the future king would be the one to step up. He has not at all stepped up. He hasn't even stepped up for, for his wife because we know apparently when she did that, her Fakata video, a <laughs> fake video thing, the narrative is that, not only was he not sitting with her on the bench, he wasn't even there. That is the narrative. So he is not even there for her. But for this Commonwealth, um, the heads of the com Commonwealth meeting in, in Samoa, you King Charles is like 70-something. And again, having treatment, as he said, for cancer. Why are you allowing your old father to have to go and do this. And so this article came out today in Wine Entertainment, uh, you know, from She Knows, says juggling responsibilities, personal hur hurdles, and constant public spotlight. What constant pub public spotlight? You haven't been anywhere. You've been home. There's been no spotlight. Prince William has shown us yet again his incredible strength and unwavering loyalty, especially towards his wife, Kate Middleton. In the face of recent health challenges hitting close to home, with both his father and wife battling cancer, William made a choice to skip an important event that really highlights his dedication, not just as a partner, but as a key figure of the British royal family. Really? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> the the way you have to twist yourself in knots to come up with this is just like, what? Again, reading on, it says, Prince William has reportedly chosen to skip the Commonwealth Head of Government meeting, the CHOGM, in Samoa, which King Charles still plans on attending. An insider revealed to Express. Attending the CHOGM is not something William can take on at this time due to Kate's health. And although Anne and other working royals are doing a great job stepping in to plug the gap at home, they are not viewed as high level enough to represent the sovereign at the leader of the Commonwealth. My thing is, if you're going to pick anybody to represent Charles, William is probably, even though he is the heir to the throne, is probably the least one you'd want to go with. When in terms of someone who would be prepared, someone with experience, who know what they're doing, who can actually represent anything close to government, anything, because why? William is never prepared. William is not capable of doing this. Why? Because William is just not ready to take on any of this. And the idea that William is choosing to, to not attend because of Kate is a cop-out. William, we know from watching William in so many things, he is not ready. He's not prepared to do any of this stuff. Even though they were claiming that, oh, he's been training for this his whole life. Lies. If they were training him, he certainly hadn't taken it in. And again, blaming his wife for the fact that he is not prepared to do this, that he doesn't want to do it. We saw, I mean, you know, the idea that they could come up with, um, you know, oh, he's doing this and it just says uh, his devotion to his wife. This is the same man who they claim, one, they claim that she has cancer. This is the same man that allow his wife with cancer to at least threw her under a bus over the, you know, fake photo bit. And then again, as you know, the, the fake, well, which is, you know, is it fake? Is it not? Whatever that video wasn't even there. He didn't show up to be there with her, not on the bench. And he wasn't even there when she supposedly made that video. 
So for them to even be insulting people with this nonsense about, oh, he chose his incredible strength and his unwavering loyalty. Loyalty? How is he showing his law in the simple things as taking responsibility for a fake photo? William couldn't do that. Responsibility for taking respons you know, taking responsibility for being there with your wife to gosh, hold her hand while she was telling the world that this supposedly big news. You couldn't be there. Now you want us to believe that, oh, the reason you're skipping the Commonwealth is for her? Lies. You're skipping it because you just don't know what to do. You are not this um, big, you know, it's like he was a global ambassador person he's trying to be, that he wants to be, but he's not. He is simply not qualified. He is not ready. He's not prepared, nothing to do this. And so his father, who actually has cancer, well, at least, you know, yes, he said he has cancer. And I, if anyone I believe it would be King Charles in this situation. The one who is definitely taking, you know, treatment for this and is 70 something years old is the one that's going to have to go all the way to Samoa because William refused to do his job. And he knows he can do it because he has a sycophantic press who would write something this stupid. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I'm like, I, you know, as much as I it irritates me, I'm like, you know what? But he is the king that, or the future king that the, the UK deserves because this, I mean, <laughs> they want this kind of laziness, it seems, and nobody is willing to challenge him on this nonsense. And so it seems that they, you know, as long as they have access to royalty, they refuse to challenge William. I mean, this is nonsense. This is absolute nonsense. If you can't even stand up for your wife when she, you know, for a fake photo, you we are supposed to believe that you that you are skipping this because of her. Ridiculous. You don't know how to do your job. That's what that's the point here. And it's like he's skipping it because, uh, you know, he's not he's not ready to do this at the time. Yeah, we know because you're not qualified <laughs> to do it. You don't have this what it takes to to represent your country in this way. And plus, William doesn't really care about the Commonwealth anyway. <laughs> so there's all that. So unbelievable. Anyway, moving on from William and his nonsense. Prince. <laughs> To the other one, you know, the UK doesn't, again, they don't have much good news. So they're kind of just like eating each other in a way now. And I'm happy that they're the ones that are calling Will um, Prince Edward out on this. Because I'm like, you know, we know what we see in Edward with his fake chocolate medals. But it's at least one of their favorite paper, the Daily Mail, is calling him out. Failed Marine Prince Edward set to, to, to head elite regiment that fought at Waterloo as colonel of the Scots Guard. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. You know, it says Prince Edward, who famously quit the Royal Marines after just four months, is set to head an elite infantry regiment that fought in the Battle of Waterloo. He will become the colonel of the Scots Guard in a ceremony in London today after being chosen by the king. Talk about, you know, <laughs> nepotism here. The Duke of Edinburgh, 60, um, is taking over from the Duke of Kent, 88, who was appointed in 1974 following a 21-year military career. Edward said he is accepting the post with a degree of trepidation, as he should, about being compared to his pre predecessor. How could you? You can't, you can't come, what, what, what would you be comparing exactly? You know, I, and I'm glad that the Duke of Kent, I mean, this poor man looks like he's about to just fall over at any moment. It is scary watching this man walk. And at this point, I'm like, leave this poor old man alone. He is just, I mean, it's time to this man to just be sitting in a rocking chair. Just leave this man alone and just let him sit there. Let him dress in his military medal with his military medals if you want to, but just leave this poor man in a rocking chair somewhere. So I'm glad he is retiring from this stuff and just look, he has done, he has done a lot. He has done so much more than William, even at this age. And so I'm glad, but again, to give this to give this post to his brother, who he knows, quit 
the Marines after four months, it is such an insult to the military. I mean, it, can you imagine you fought in a war and all of that stuff, and this person is going to be your colonel? This is why you kind of you cannot take this stuff seriously because it's kind of like I would, if I were this God's God, I would be making a huge stink about this. This is completely just, you know, it's disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. And even, you know, even you see stuff with, say, even Princess Anne wearing all these medals, who is leading Kate Middleton, even Prince William. None of them have really done anything of anything in the military to be holding the positions that they have. At least the Duke of Kent was, you know, in the military. You know, Princess Anne's husband was in the military. At least give it to people who have had experience in the military who's working whether they went into combat or not at least you know you know it's not an insult this with prince edward is an insult it's an insult to anybody who has served in the military this is ridiculous and so i don't i mean there's this thing with the uk where it's like if you are um if you are royal then you can do this stuff and people, you know, you see military people saluting these people. And it's just like, when is somebody going to speak up and say, you know what? No, we're not going to accept this. This is ridiculous. No. Why is Kate leading or something? What is, when has Kate been in the military? What is, when has Edward been? I mean, I, I don't understand why they allow this stuff. So that I, people on the outside, like me looking, I, I can't take any of them seriously. Because this is nonsense. It's like if you're royal, then it's okay. But then it makes the rest of you look like a joke. You can't even think of them as serious people in the military. Because, I mean, I, I just like, come on, people. Have some oomph about you. Speak up. Don't allow people to do this to you. And I, I don't know. It's just maybe it's just me. But I just, I, I, like, I don't understand. I could not be in this place and have this happen and not say something. I, I just have too much of a, big, of a big mouth. And so it's just like, I, yee. So anyways, um, let's see what else I got. I think, uh, final, oh, yes. And uh, I saw this from the press reader and apparently it's an article from the Daily Mail that they had on their website. And um, away from Prince Edward and his nonsense. And um, it's about Angela Kelly, the AK-47, that very um, nasty one that was the queen's best friend. And so <laughs> there was a time there were these things about Angela and the queen. You're like, mm, maybe I don't want to know that. But anyways, so Angela Kelly, apparently when the queen died, she apparently went to Windsor to take back, I don't know why she had all of this Queen's stuff with her. I have no idea why. Maybe she brought it from, um, you know, one of the homes, maybe in uh, Sandringham or something. I don't know. But they said that, you know, when she went back to Kensington, uh, to Windsor Castle, she found the doors were locked. And so that there preceded her being kicked out right after the queen died. And that is a pattern of the royal family. When you work for a member of the royal family and that person dies, they will literally kick you out. And a lot of times with no notice and with no like, you know, severance or anything. So anyway, we know, um, hang on one second. We know with Angela Kelly, um, well, this is a little bit about the article. It says, uh, with a withered brick facade and plastic window frames, it was a far cry from the grace and favor cottage he enjoyed for four years as the queen's dresser. But this 465,000 pound three bedroom bungalow is a place Angela Kelly, 66, one of the queen's closest confidants, can finally call home thanks to the generosity of the king. As reported by Mail on Sunday last year, Miss Kelly was asked to leave her grade two listed cottage on the Windsor estate within months of Her Majesty's death in 2022. However, Charles decided to honor his mother's promise, a promise of lifelong accommodation for her, um, for her dedicated employee by discreetly having a house purchased. Um, believed to be part of the deal banning Miss Kelly from ever sharing royal secrets. The 80s style property is uh, 160, 160 miles from Berkshire in the Peak District and enjoys stunning views of the rolling hills. Paid for outright by the Royal Family Coots bank account, it is thought the property will revert to the crown when Miss Kelly dies. And so I find it's very interesting because they've gagged her 
And so they were uh, one when she came back, they she apparently had an apartment or rooms at Windsor Castle when she right after the queen died, she came back to return some stuff for the queen and she found it locked. So she was locked out of Windsor Castle. They changed the locks on her. And then Charles kicked her out of her grace and favor home on the Windsor um, property, in the Windsor Great Park property. And so, and then he got her. So now she can't write anything about the royal family. She can't write anything that has royal family and other, anything or crown or any of those things that refers back to the royal family. If she writes something, she can. So apparently he gagged her that she can't write anything. And so I guess that was the deal for her to have a home. And then notice that when I heard that he purchased her home for her, I was like, mm, I don't think that's her house. And then sure enough, apparently the property will revert back to the crown when she dies, not gonna go to one of her family members. So this is really Charles's house that she is just living in it until she dies. And until that day, she is gagged from ever writing or publishing anything that has anything to do with the royal family or any of the secrets that she has carried with her. So she is pretty much silenced. <laughs> and now she lives 160 miles away from Windsor. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh. <laughs> but I guess she had to take it. I mean, I, again, a lot of times when someone dies, they literally kick you out of the royal family. So hopefully people save a little bit of money so that they can take care of themselves. But a lot of times people don't, and then they get kicked out. And people have gone on, you know, public assistance, whatever it's called in the UK. In the US, it's like public assistance. They've gone on their public assistance, the UK version, because of being kicked out of the royal household when the person they're working for died. They are, br they are brutal with that. I remember when the queen died, some of her staff, I think the day of her, like they were doing a memorial or something, King Charles's um, uh, right-hand person basically told a lot of them they were fired right after the memorial service. And of course it caused great upset. They are brutal when it comes to stuff like this. They have no sympathy, no pity whatsoever. Your person died, you're out. And this is kind of what happened to her. So whether she saved money or not, don't know. But now she's living in Charles's home. And when she dies, it goes back to Charles. This is how the royal family are. <laughs> I'm telling you, these people are cold. They are cold. But anyways, uh, finally, um, and then I'll get into the chat for a second for a bit. Um, Santi Bali, away from the... UK and back to the beautiful Florida, <laughs> back to the UK. I'm sorry, back to the US. Uh, Santi Bali uh, posted this today. It says, that's a wrap on the Royal Salute Polo Challenge to benefit Santi Bali, a day filled with sun, the spirit of the sport and community. We, we gather to benefit the work of our organization. Thank you to just under two, 300 attendees to our wonderful sponsor, and partners and uh so they are very very excited and we see some of the sponsors over there uh royal uh the royal salute and some of the people that were there and uh, what i understand it was about 280 people were in attendance very rich people and that they raised i still haven't gotten firm confirmation that they raised over a million dollars so we'll see as as soon as i have firm confirmation i will let you know so or you can let me know as well so yeah so but that's it um just a lot of stuff happening but our fave has strawberry jam so the world is good <laughs> things are good so yeah so i'm just gonna jump stay in the chat for a minute and uh, before we end, um, let's see. Christine Rao. Hi, Christine says, of all the royals who served their country, Prince Harry is the only family member that deserved that honor. Every C that has a role to play in the UK. Every C that, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but yeah. I mean, Prince Harry, I mean, even again, Princess Anne's husband was his military. He could have got, I mean, maybe he didn't, maybe he didn't want the royal whatever, but, or somebody outside of the royal family. Why does it have to be a royal family member who had that role? And then to diminish it, to, I mean, they become a laughing stock because you can't think of the royal, the Scots, you can't think of them without thinking about Prince Edward and his four months in the military. That's all people can be talking about. So all of them become a laughing stock because of it. It's ridiculous. So yeah, 
Lana says that's the ugliest Scottish I've ever seen. But Kelly couldn't even escape from the squatties there. <laughs> Some young squatty ran into her and told her, oh, are you serious? I never heard this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have never heard this before. That is wild. A squatty told her off. <laughs> Ooh, to be a fly in the wall of that cottage <laughs> to hear that one. That is interesting because they said it's very remote. So I'm assuming that, you know, maybe she was very far away from anyone living around near her cottage. So I just imagine her just being there with her dogs and cats and, you know, whatever else to uh, comfort her. So <laughs> I don't know, but very interesting. Lola Love says, oh, she's talking to Sonia. The, the day will come when KC3 and William are no longer a threat to Harry, bringing his family over to the, to the UK and to visit Diana's grave. The monarchy is on its last legs. Look, I mean, they've said this before about the monarchy being on its last legs, but um, this time it's just, it does seem like that way. There, there, there doesn't seem to be any the kind of hope that, you know, you, because you would think, okay, the younger generation coming up would be, but, you know, you think of the ones that are younger than, say, the ones that are there now, they don't seem interested in any of this stuff, especially Edward and Sophie's kids. They're like, we're no, no, thank you. I mean, the girl, whatever her name is, I never remember what her name is, but she was entitled to take her princess title and she didn't even do it. She did not, she didn't take the title. So you know that she doesn't want any. Or at least it seems she doesn't want anything to do with that stuff. Beatrice, uh, I mean, Beatrice might be the only one that seem could be interested, but I mean, Eugenie is not interested. She moved, I guess, now full time. They said to Portugal, and you know, Arthur is definitely not interested in any of that mess. So, <laughs> and William and Kate <laughs> don't seem to be interested either. So it just there's just no interest, and all the people that are working are like. 50 and above and you're like uh yeah there's not much interest here at all so it does seem in a lot of ways to be on its last as it should as it should be on its last like there's no reason again if you're going to be royally go royal all you want but do it on your own dime and not on taxpayers i mean the taxpayers the, the sovereign grant is going to go up from i think it, it's either next year yeah, I think it's either 2025 or 2026. It's going to go up from 86 million pounds to 126 million pounds. For what? What? Why would that be going up? And that's how they do it. Like the, the sovereign grant, how they have structured it can never go down. It can always go up. And so it's going to go up to 126 million pounds when you have just about nobody working and William claiming he wants to do a stay at home kind of thing, a work from home royal. And Kate is, well, maybe you'll see her next year or 2026, maybe, you know, the rest, and, and just for what exactly? So, and again, there's no outrage. So why am I being outraged about it? I'm not even in that country. So there you go. Um, <laughs> TBTV says, those castles smell really old and decades to me. You have to live somewhere else to notice it because I did. <laughs> you were in them and they smell old. They're probably, well, again, they're, I guess they're old buildings. And so they have the mystique, but then the smell is probably, I would think, yeah, unbecoming. So <laughs> sorry, TBT. I'm sorry that you had that experience. So uh, let's see. Um, uh, Dory says they are burning time because William has done something and they're trying to protect him. They don't know how and when to roll it out. He's certainly acting very skeevy and they've all been acting very skeevy about whatever. I still am on that Thomas Kingston thing and how, why he outed himself and so, or offed himself and I, I, nobody has said anything. I'm like, Why? What happened to that man? So, yeah. Very interested to find out that. Connie, thank you so much for your super sticker. I appreciate your support as always. Thank you very much. Let's see. Um, let's see. Lola Love says Willie wants to spend time stalking, harassing, and defaming his brother and sister-in-law. Well, he does that already, right? 
that's just unbelievable. Jones says, poor, uh, poor Duke of Kent is barely able to walk. Time he retired, but the, the Edward is a joke. Not fit to command a Boy Scout troop, not to mention a regiment. I mean, I couldn't have said this better. I mean, this, this poor man, again, there should be no reason to see this man out on engagements ever. For me, at this point, it just looks like elder abuse. It's the same way I feel felt about, you know, I'm not here for the royal family, but I grew up with my grandmother. So that is something that's very, very, very uh, sensitive to me. And to, you know, to see the queen, I mean, just to see the her arm to her hand with the, I guess, just black and just so frail and she still was doing royal and get, I mean, that is ridiculous. There is no reason to have these people there when you have somebody like William who is nothing wrong with William and is like using his wife as an excuse for not for doing nothing. While you have an 80 year old, 88 year old out there barely able to walk, that's ridiculous. They should come down on William really, really hard. I mean, that is laziness to the core. So yeah, let's see. Glory says, says Will, uh, Prince Edward lost a lot of weight. I was wondering, is sick or something for a while? For a while, that it looks like he's gaining a little bit back. He doesn't look, at least to me, it doesn't seem like he look as uh, frail as he did. And I, because when it was happening, I was like, there's something wrong. And I realized he he's probably grieving. And because it, it all happened, started happening right after the queen died. And, you know, we remember his father passed away and then mom passed away. That's a lot. And I, for me, uh, you know, there could be other things, but what I was thinking, it could have been because of grief. And so that happens to people sometimes, you just, you know, you can't eat, you can't function. There's so much. And I think he just took it really hard. He was the one that was crying in the church and then they, the royal, the monarchy controlling the BBC had them delete or edit out William uh, uh, Edward in tears. And Sophie was also crying and stuff like that. But I think he really took, if, at least what it seemed, he really, really took it hard as, you know, as his mother and his father. So, of course. So that's what it seemed to me. It, it looks like he is gaining some weight back. I, that just could be me or maybe just wanting him, you know. I mean, look, with grief and stuff, you want people to be able to heal and maybe he is healing a little bit. So, yeah. Uh, Karen M, our awesome moderator, says the UK military is a joke. Katie, Katie over military people, Edward over military, military people, that must really hurt the real military. That's what I'm saying. I'm surprised they haven't really spoken out about it. And But again, they are so subservient to the mil to the to the royal family they just kiss their feet and they allow them to treat them in this way i'm like i served in if i served in the in the war whatever there is no way i'm letting someone like kate middleton and prince edward you know be over my unit or over my whatever group it is without making a ruckus about it. That is ridiculous because again, it makes a mockery of, of, of their service. It makes a mockery of whatever the organization is. It's ridiculous. I feel the same way about them, you know, leading mental, these mental health things. I'm like, these people should have no business being head or, you know, doing anything for anybody's mental health, anything. So it's incredible. But anyways, um, let's see. Angelina says the fact that William has no problem seeing these elderly people get dragged out of the house and he still don't want to do more than smile and wave from teams. <laughs> I know, right? Exactly. Teams or whatever platform he's using to work from home. Um, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. And again, laziness, entitled, lazy, never been challenged because he is the heir. I mean, that is... And again, it'll be for the British people to make us think about it, and nobody's making us think. So yeah, um, <laughs> TCMD is laughing. Yeah, at least look, we didn't have to say it. At least they're the ones that called him the failed, <laughs> failed Marine. So there, at least we didn't have to say it. We know it, but you know, we didn't have to say a word. So at least they're owning that. So yeah, uh, let's see. What else? A couple more before we end. Because I have to run out of here. Um, 
Uh, Lola, Lola, I think you're it. I'm always dropping on your comments. Lola Love says, Willie doesn't care about any of the Commonwealth nations. Maybe it's time for those Commonwealth nations to break away fully. The monarchy is dying. Seriously. Again, this whole thing with the head of the Commonwealth is ridiculous. It's not it's supposedly not a hereditary position, but that thing has gone from the queen, uh, well, the queen to King Charles. I think the queen's father also, but the queen and King Charles. And it's like, they were like, oh, William is going to take, it's like one, William doesn't want it. And I thought you all said it wasn't hereditary. There, for all the, what is a 56 nations, I think that is part of the Commonwealth. There are no one of those leaders elected leaders that could lead the commonwealth but to unelect uh, unelected people leading the commonwealth of nations and especially if william takes over one that doesn't even care that is ridiculous and i, I was very upset at the leaders for allowing the queen to really strangle hole and bribe them really to make charles the king and all that is is controlling the power keeping power in the UK, keeping power in the royal family, which is what she did. And the, the leaders allowed her to do it. I, I would never understand them allowing her to do that. So unbelievable. But anyways, that is the Commonwealth. It is ridiculous. It is useless. It is the only people that benefit from that is the UK. And so, yeah, unbelievable. Anyways, I think that's all I got, guys. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you so much for just, uh, yep, that's it. <laughs> um, for, you know, hanging, chatting the whole bit. And as we celebrate our strawberry jam, hopefully fingers crossed for peach and mango and raspberry and blueberry. That's our faves here in, in the chat. I think I got all, I got a, a, us all covered. So yeah. So anyways, hopefully more flavors. That would be awesome. But anyway, thank you to our awesome moderator. Even though she wasn't here, I didn't see Lydia today. But Trisha Ellie, Karen M, Cookies and Cream. I didn't see Black Queen either. But thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you do every time we're on here to make this chat safe for us and not trolls. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And also to all of our Two Cents crew who support the chat in a monthly or the podcast in a monthly basis. And to those of you who support via PayPal, Cash App, or in the chat, like with Super Chats and Super, and straight up donations and, and Super Stickers and, and stuff. Thank you all so very much for your support. I could not do this without you. Oh, I just missed something. KDV, two months. Oh, thank you, KDV, for being part of the Two Cents crew for two months. She's like, listen to them lying tongue from the royal family, uh, telling lies to the British people. Yes, 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 KDV. But thank you so much for being a part of the Two Cents crew. I appreciate you and everyone so very much. So anyways, guys, have a fantastic day. I love you all, and I will chat with you all soon. Bye. Oh, 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 o